Hey everyone, happy Wednesday and welcome to our weekly COVID-19 update. Uh, this is the update for the week of May 6th, 2020. Uh, I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT. Um, and I'll ask right off the bat, if you excuse any construction noise, Ohio is starting to slowly open up um, and we actually have some things going on at our house. So I apologize in advance. I'm also here with Ned Damon, uh, Principal Data Scientist at DAT. And how are things over in Oregon, Ned? Uh, well, we're opening up a little bit slower than you folks are in Ohio, but uh, we're, we're starting. Uh, the governor has opened up the state park, so that's great. Going to try and get the, the lad out there this weekend. Uh, he's been building a lot of Lego train stations, and we've been doing a lot of long walks and, and just walk, going around to try and take advantage of the, the reasonably nice weather for Oregon that we're having. But uh, we're not here to talk about the boy. We're here to talk about freight. So, uh, Ken, you're going to start off by talking about uh, current supply and demand. Uh, with rates and trends and our market conditions data. Um, and then I'm gonna be talking about the forecasting models. Um, we've got some good news this week, which is great. I love good news. And then finally, we're gonna be answering a great question from our Ask IQ inbox at askiq at dat.com. Uh, Ken? Thanks, Ned. Yeah, so we're gonna start with um, market dynamics this week. And diving right into it, I have the dry van load to truck ratios here. So. Um, again, as Ned alluded, we have some good news this week um, on, on all fronts, really. So on the drive-in side, we're above one. And what does that mean? That means for the first time in three or four weeks, we have a load-to-truck ratio greater than one, which means there are more loads than there are trucks. So we're still below where we were in 2019. We're below, obviously, where we were when we started all of this, but we're starting to th see things point upward a bit. There's some seasonally upward pressure um, in drive-ins right now, although not as much as you would see in reefer. Um, which leads us right into the reefer chart. So uh, again, I think this is this is good, right? Because we're starting to see upward pressure. We're starting to see seasonality. We're starting to see a return to um, normal a bit. So we're not at normal. We're just starting to see things starting to point towards what normal might look like. Um, we're, we've seen things come back. We're starting to point right at 2019. I would expect us to surpass 2019 levels in the next couple of weeks, if not sooner. It's also important to note that we're starting from a much lower point than we expected this time of year. So we have a long way to go in our recovery. Uh, it's just really good to start seeing recovery. I wanna show MCI. So this is drive in MCI. I pulled it today with the previous day's data. So this is for five, five for drive ins. So first thing to highlight, typical Southern port areas as we've seen continue to light up. So we have LA, Long Beach, Houston, Savannah, yeah, Miami, even a little bit. We start to see again, some just general seasonal upticks in the South. But when I show reefer here right now, you start to see a lot more red. So you see most of California, even pushing into Arizona, uh, showing strength. Uh, Houston and South Texas cooling off a little bit this week, but really strong in central and Southern Georgia and Florida. The one area of interest, if you look at um, the Northwest, right? So we have Twin Falls, and I believe that's Pendleton, and that's your neck of the woods, Ned. Do you have any idea what's really driving some of that that heat out there on the reefer side? Um, that's the agricultural area for Eastern Oregon and, and Idaho. So there's a lot of potatoes there, but it's kind of early for potato season. I'm a data guy, and this is the kind of thing that human judgment is really helpful about because. Um, Having the data is not just about uh, answering questions, but a lot of it is about finding the right questions to answer, the right questions to ask, and having good data like this MCI data is really helpful for finding the right questions to ask. And I think that this is a good question to ask. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the context. Um, I'm going to pivot over to rates really quick um, because, you know, last week, what did we talk about? We said rates for dry vans and reefers really appear to be bottoming out. Um, we, we thought that they would overshoot, or I guess you'd say undershoot. The, the levels that we thought would be um, a low point in the market and then start to recover. So if we take a look, starting with dry van, that's pretty much exactly what we see. It's been a week of moderate recovery. I wouldn't say that we've shot back up, but we're at least flattening to recover. Um, we're seeing things point back towards 2016 levels. Again, very similar story. We've lost a lot of ground, which means we have to gain a lot of ground back to show growth. But between that growth and where we stand today is a lot of room for recovery. And I think that's, again, a good news story. Showing the extreme short term, we show 
you know, what we talked about last week was support around the dollar 35 level with some potential for overshoot. And again, pretty much exactly what we saw. We saw rates um, overshoot that number on the way down and then recover back to that support level. The good news is the very short term data doesn't show any signs of relapsing back below. If anything, it shows um, accelerated or I'm sorry, continued trends um, upward. I'm gonna show reefer here because I think this is, if we're gonna kind of point to one really good news story for the week, it would be reefers. Um, as we all know, food service and the grocery shipping saw the huge spike in March and then the lack of commercial food service and just general slowdown in the economy due to social distancing drove rates substantially down, much, you know, at a much more rapid pace than dry van. Good news is we're seeing that start to recover. Um, compared to dry van, that only had a couple cents of recovery, we're starting to see, especially in certain pockets, seven to 10 cents of recovery on the reefer side. Um, currently where we are from a 16 perspective, pointing up towards 17. And we should expect much stronger seasonal, seasonal pressures through the end of June, early July with reefers. I wanna to touch on really quick uh, reefer spot rates. And this is the short-term view, because I think this is where we start to see the acceleration in the short-term view. Um, whereas on the, reef, on the dry van side, we saw sort of trend-based and more of a linear upward trend from a recovery standpoint. We're seeing evidence that there will be more of an accelerated recovery on the reefer side. Something we're gonna watch very closely. We still have, you know, roughly say 10 cents to go before we're you know back to parity with prior year. But again, seasonal pressure should keep things moving up. We've, we've gotten a lot of really great questions and comments about our forecasting model. Um, so I want to turn it over to Ned to walk through what the models are seeing this week. Ned? Thanks, Ken. Um, so we're going to start off by looking at the uh, models that we ran uh, for dry van back on 428. Um, so this graph, it shows in the blue line what the actually submitted rates by our rate view contributors were. And then uh, off on the right area, we have a suite of forecasting models. So these models take the actually submitted rates that are contributed by rate view customers, um, kind of mix them up a little bit, aggregate them and generate a forecast from them. Uh, we have four different models in this particular spaghetti chart. We've got our rate cast model in green. We have our pessimistic model in red. And then we have our two blended forecasts in uh, kind of gray and yellow. And you can see that um, from the runs that we did on 428, uh, the rate cast model has been the most accurate out of the suite, which is great. Uh, and there's a reason why it's our flagship model. But uh, it's also, if anything, undershot a little bit the, the rate of growth, which is fantastic. I love this kind of good news. Um, and you'll see that the, the of the model suite, I think the uh, moving forward, um, you can see that the rate cast model is continuing to expect that our rates will uh, trend uh, flat to upwards, which is excellent news. Uh, whereas our pessimistic model still hasn't kind of caught up to the good news and it's still forecasting uh, a lot of gloom and doom uh, with our blended models taking a more moderate approach. Uh, so that was the, the runs that were just done yesterday. And then in the next chart, you'll see that same data, but for reefer. Uh, and you can see that uh, of the runs that were done yesterday, there's been a lot of upward trend. Even the pessimistic model, which has kind of a lower level, but the, the trend overall is flat for the pessimistic model, which is great. And then for the rest of our suite, it's all uh, up and to the right, which is lovely to see this time of year and, and under these conditions. Um, so that's our uh, forecast update. Um, Ken, do you have a question for us? Yeah, before I get to the question, I just wanted to plug Ned and fellow data scientist Cynthia O'Rourke put together a really great piece on our blog that explains um, you know, how to go about building predictive models like this and then relates it back to freight forecasting. And I think it goes a long way to dispel some of the misinformation out there about why historical data is important um, and the critical role it plays in forecasting, you know, especially freight forecasting. So I highly recommend checking that out. Um, our question this week, uh, really interesting question. So um, this came into our Ask IQ inbox um, from a carrier. So I'm looking to start my own trucking company with cargo vans and pickup trucks. Any advice? Absolutely. So uh, the first thing I would say is that I really appreciate getting this kind of question. We get a lot of emails in our Ask IQ inbox that are people asking for our top 50 lanes report, um, which is the top 50 spot lanes, both a couple of days back of spot data and then forward uh, the short term forecast in our models. 
But um, this kind of a question is something that I really like to be able to answer because it's a real person in real uh, in a real dilemma, and being able to provide data to help them out is something that I really enjoy. Um, so I'd start off by saying that right now rates are, are really low, and so it's going to be a tough market to get started in. Um, but if you can survive in this climate, you can survive at any time. So being able to uh, make yourself profitable in this kind of an environment is going to be great training for, for when the markets come back. Um, the thing that I would note is that you, uh, for that kind of equipment, uh, hotshot, LTL kind of stuff, you need to be able to find loads for it. Um, and being able to use our load board well uh, to find exactly those kind of loads is really important. Being a carrier isn't just about driving, it's about, uh, it's a business. And a lot of the elements of business are being able to price well. And some of the tools that we've been developing are designed to try and help carriers to, to get better rates. Uh, on the flip side, costs are just as important as revenue. So um, given that there aren't a whole lot of loads in the market, it's, it's kind of slack. It might be a good time to focus on things that are going to reduce your costs overall. So like maintenance, new tires, maybe uh, retiring some old equipment um, that isn't uh, giving you the same kind of per mile cost that newer equipment would have to ensure that you're going to be able to get the best bag for your buck and that you're going to be able to kind of maximize the the slack amount of freight that exists right now. Yeah. And, you know, my prior experience, um, I worked in an expediter, right, doing a lot of hotshot and expedited loads. And the one other piece of advice I would add is to be very mindful of the, the industries that you're you're servicing. You know, a lot of expedite freight, a lot of hotshot freight are tied to energy or the auto industry, or both of which are, you know, kind of getting hammered right now. So it's just kind of something to be mindful of ways to supplement and ways to diversify the type of freight you haul um, to make sure that you can weather these types of ebbs and flows in the market. So wrapping up this week, I just wanted to start by saying thank you to everyone. You know, we've, we've gotten a great amount of engagement and this is a great way for us to interact with you know viewers and partners and customers alike so uh, we, we appreciate everyone who's been tuning into these videos I don't I, it should come as no surprise that we're not professionals at this it's not our day job DAT is not a media <laughs> company you know, we spend our investment dollars in data and products um, you know not flashy production so again we just wanted to thank everyone and um, hope that you, you stick with us as we improve this this format I also wanted to give a shout out to, to some folks who may have access to the, the early beta of our Raycast product in production. Uh, we launched our eight day forecast just last night. I think we've had, and uh, these numbers are a bit outdated, but it was well over a million hits on the 52 week forecast just since its beta release a few weeks ago. Um, so we highly encourage to go check that out and let us know what you think of the eight day. Um, lastly, um, give Please. a plug to dat.com slash COVID-19. Um, that's where we'll post our comprehensive updates as well as any other commentary. And as always, if you want the free DAT daily 50 lane report, or if you just want to shoot us a question, um, doesn't even have to be about freight. You can ask us about the weather. I think we're just all looking <laughs> to talk to other people right now. So um, askIQ at DAT.com. Um, we'll do our best to get back to you in a timely manner. So again, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll talk to you next week and we hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for keeping America moving.